Now to the fallout of Super Tuesday. And Nikki Haley, Haley rather, says she has no regrets as she suspended her presidential campaign after being soundly defeated across the country on Super Tuesday, leaving Donald Trump as the last remaining major candidate for the 2024 Republican nomination. Now she's not yet endorsed the former president, leading then to that inevitable question as to where the votes of those who support her will go. Well, we're going to discuss that and broaden the issue as well with our international affairs editor Ketaman Gorgistani, who's with me. Uh, so that is the big question, isn't it, really, at the moment? Where will the people uh, who voted for Nikki Haley go now? Yes, and of course, both Donald Trump and uh, Joe Biden, within seconds of Haley's announcement, were very quick to call on those voters to come and join them in very different styles. For uh, Donald Trump, it was a sort of mocking of Haley that ended with uh, saying her, to her voters, please come and join my uh, movement. For Biden, it was more about praising Haley for standing up to Trump and telling uh, those moderate Republicans that they had a space uh, with uh, him. Uh, now, the question of uh, Haley's voters, why are they so important? They're very important because the categories that are must, most represented among Haley voters are uh, the well-educated, uh, suburban, more uh, moderate uh, Republicans. And these are all groups that are going to be crucial in uh, November, especially in a race that is expected to be extremely close, and especially in those key uh, battleground uh, states. And that's why you're seeing uh, both Biden and uh, Trump going after them. What are their options for Haley voters? Uh, the easy option is, well, in the end, you're a Republican and uh, you end up uh, voting uh, for Donald Trump. Uh, then for the never-Trumpers, those who said that there's absolutely zero chance they will vote for Trump, the option is either stay at home or believe that Donald Trump is a threat enough to American democracy that they are willing to vote for a Democrat, Joe Biden. And that is the message that Joe Biden is really putting out there for those uh, voters. The question is really how those three options are going to split in November. And that could very well uh, determine at least partly the result of the race. And let's not forget, there's quite a long way to go till November yet. Yeah? Of course, those primaries, those caucuses, they're carrying on, aren't they? They're absolutely carrying on, even though it's a done deal for uh, both sides, basically, for Donald Trump and uh, Joe Biden. But those primaries are going to happen. Those votes are going to happen. And mathematically, neither of them have actually clinched uh, enough delegate to officially call themselves uh, the uh, nominee, especially Donald Trump. Uh, that could happen uh, next week. That could happen on March 12th. There are 161 delegates at stake in uh, four uh, states, including a state like Georgia, for example, that is expected to be a battleground uh, state. Uh, so he could very well clinch uh, that official uh, nomination uh, by next week. So historically, this is really like being done very, very early on in the process. But then you have those conventions, July for the Republicans uh, and August for uh, the Democrats. And that's when really you start uh, the, the final stretch until uh, November. So there's still a long way to go. Uh, still a lot of things that can happen. And of course, uh, we're going to see one big event uh, for uh, both Donald Trump and uh, Joe Biden uh, kicking off really this uh, sort of duel now that Haley is is, uh, stopping her race. And there's another big event, isn't there? Because uh, Joe Biden is going to address a joint session of Congress, the US Capitol, this Thursday. Could be one of his uh, most important speeches for quite a while, anyway. Absolutely. And the State of the Union is always an important speech. It's even more important in an election year. But for Joe Biden, the stakes are really high. And it's probably the most important speech he's going to give in his political uh, career. And uh, he has hinted at what uh, it could be uh, on Twitter. His team uh, posted about uh, this being a progress report to tell the American people how the country is doing after about three years to tout the achievements of the Biden administration. But really, uh, the underlying message is going to be that Joe Biden needs to respond to the concerns of uh, the American uh, people. Concerns first about the economy. Yes, the U.S. economy, when you look at the numbers, it's doing well. But the feeling of the American people is not in line with those good numbers. So Joe Biden is going to try to show the American people that, yes, the economy is getting uh, better. Uh, concerns about the state of the world, Ukraine, Gaza. This is also concerns for Democratic voters, the younger, the more progressive, the Arabs, the Muslim Americans. Uh, he's going to have to talk to them because they have a problem with how he's been supporting Israel in what is happening in Gaza. And of course, the age-old 
question of uh, Joe Biden's health, Joe Biden's age. He's going to have to show that he is fit for office, and he's going to try to replicate uh, last year's speech where he was seen as this feisty uh, Joe Biden. Uh, he was sparring with those Republicans who were heckling him, and I think uh, his team is hoping that you're going to see that over the one hour or so that the speech is uh, going to last, but everybody is going to be looking at any possible uh, stumbles. And finally, it's also a campaign speech. He's going to try to uh, push his messaging, and there have been, in, there have been two winners messages for the Democrats over the past uh, two years or so, which is one, uh, the fight for the future of American democracy. He's going to make the case of the difference between him and uh, what he says is Donald Trump's uh, chaos. Uh, and he's going to push uh, the messaging about abortion, because that has really been the winning issue for Democrats. So uh, they're going to try to really show that the Republicans, whether it's Donald Trump or all the way down ballot, are a threat to abortion rights, and that could really help them in November.